直接开始了。Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, this is uh, a program uh, co-sponsored by Tianjin TV and Phoenix TV. My name is uh, Zhang Lijun from Tianjin TV. My name is uh, Tiger Hu Yihu from uh, Phoenix. Uh, you are welcome. Uh, Mr. Hu, you came to uh, Tianjin many times. Uh, this is my fifth time uh, to uh, Davos, uh, Tianjin. Any uh, new feelings, impressions? Uh, the first thing is that I have to uh, join hands with you for this program. My proud issue today has to do with the theme of this uh, summer Davos. Uh, in the previous uh, five uh, summer Davos, we talk about uh, how China's economy will grow. We are concerned with whether China's economy uh, will be uh, the savior of the world economy. But today. We have to calm down for the first time to feel what China will need for a green economy. Uh, this is a key word uh, for today's discussion. How to uh, build a green economy in China? We know uh, the term of a green economy was invented in 1989 by a British economist. That is 25 years before. Right now, there's a great change that's taken place uh, in this world. Uh, we are now today talking about the theme of a green economy. Is it's very timely. Green economy, the two words, is very easy to hear, but we need economists and scientists and specialists to talk about that. We are going to talk, introduce uh, some of these specialists. Uh, first one, Mr. Gong Ke, president of uh, Nankai University. Uh, beside him, uh, we are going to welcome Lin, Mr. Lin Boqiang, Director of uh, China Center of Economy uh, Research in Xiamen University, Amoy. Uh, thirdly, Mr. Chen Yilong, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Sunshine uh, Kaiti. Then, Mr. Christian Rinning Tonneson, President and CEO of uh, the uh, Starcraft Norway. Uh, there is a fifth one. Why there's an empty seat? You can see. The name is that uh, Mr. Zhang Xinsheng, President of International Union for Conservation of Nature. He is not stuck in traffic. The heavy traffic has to do with today's uh, theme. How can we build China into a green economy? Uh, the traffic jam. Uh, has to do with uh, uh, building a uh, green economy. Whether we could find a solution uh, to build a more greener uh, economy to solve this problem. Let's uh, solve this problem. Uh, you, you, sir, if you build a green uh, transportation, we can uh, mitigate this problem. Maybe, uh, Mr. Elong, uh, you are a businessman, and uh, anything you can do to help that? Uh, yes. Uh, low carbon development uh, will help to solve the problem. Mr. Gong, I'm not that optimistic. Uh, uh, still, we have a large number of uh, vehicles. Uh, management uh, issue is uh, very important. Uh, what about our uh, Norwegian friend? Whether we can uh, allow those uh, people get stuck in the traffic to come here on time next time? I believe there's a lot China can do, and I'll say a, say a few words about it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, how to uh, make uh, a green economy in China, which is a serious uh, topic. First of all, I'd like to show you uh, some video from the uh, uh, video clips. Over the past uh, few years, China has been the largest manufacturer in the world, also putting Japan as the third economic entity. However, every country has been paying a price, that is a CO2 emission. Uh, global CO2 emission in 2011, China accounts for 18, 28%, US 16, China 18, US 16, EU 7%, EU 11%. However, on average, uh, China's uh, uh, CO2 emission is 6.6 uh, .6 tons, EU 7.3 tons, US 17.2 tons. Uh, economic growth versus environmental problem is a major issue globally. Estimated. Uh, 
uh, spending for environmental protection during the 12 five year plan is uh, about uh, 3.4 trillion RMB. Green uh, China's economy is a must uh, for sustaining development. Uh, how does China tackle this issue? What way could China keep uh, its balance in achieving economic growth and uh, environmental protection? You have seen the figures. Uh, the something jumped into my mind is that uh, whether this M CO2 emission, we have to focus on the total emission or uh, like uh, average per capita is more important. Uh, let me uh, make a survey among this audience. Uh, when we are looking at uh, the emission, we have to uh, do those who are in favor of uh, those uh, total emission has to be accountable. Please raise up your hand. The Chinese journalists uh, all believe that uh, we have to uh, uh, help those uh, total emission accountable. Uh, President, what what's your opinion? Uh, for in terms of uh, impact on the, the uh, environment, we have to focus on total emission and uh, uh, impact. I, I'm in favor of uh, total emission. Uh, act uh, actually, there is a reason for average per capita emission. What about you? Uh, valid argument that it should be per capita counting, but China is so large and will be hit by the water levels on the uh, sea level rise. So uh, China has to do a great job anyway. Uh, the Norwegian friend, uh, actually, he knows more about China. China has a lot of uh, problems. We have a huge uh, population. Now let's come to the key issue. To green China, the key issue is that uh, we have to uh, have a institutionalized new line of thinking. What is your idea, Mr. President? In terms of uh, the systems, we need a good legisla legislation, rule making, law making. Over the past few years, China does make progress, but in terms of enforcement, we still lag behind. Whether our legislation is based on science, whether it is based on soliciting the opinions, whether it is based on those we do not know. So we have to make more efforts in a transparent lawmaking process with scientific analysis, with accurate data and information and also the participation of all stakeholders. Uh, Mr. Gong, you mentioned legislation is very important part, uh, but in the course of legislation, I'm sure all businesses will ask a question. Uh, I'm going to uh, support this, uh, but what it will be the uh, uh, contribution from us, uh, uh, Bo Qiang, uh, there is a hot topic, uh, uh, Mr. Li Daokui said, uh, in the next uh, uh, future, in the near future, three economy will support China. Green economy is one of the pillars. Do you think so? Uh, this is a broad topic. Uh, how do we uh, define green economy? It's still when ambiguous. Uh, what is uh, green? What is non-green? We're not so sure. Uh, there is no clear demarcation. My idea is that. Uh, uh, Anything cleaner than the previous uh, approaches uh, will be green. But in the future, whether uh, green uh, will be a, a, a economy, it depends on how we, uh, we could uh, define what is a green economy. So your idea is that a green economy is still uh, vague, right? Uh, I'd like to give you a new piece of news, uh, the four panelists uh, is uh, now finally, uh, yes, uh, they are quite right. Mr. Zhang Xinsheng has just arrived from the traffic jam. Uh, now uh, you join the four panelists uh, on the platform. Uh, Mr. Zhang, you just come uh, from the uh, traffic jam. We just made a, ma a joke uh, whether we could uh, solve this uh, traffic jam uh, by greening China's economy. Uh, you are uh, one of the sufferers, the victims. Uh, can you share with us uh, your idea uh, in terms of a green economy? I'm sorry, I have some uh, different opinions on green economy. Uh, right now, there are four problems. Uh, number one, whether uh, economy can be made green, whether uh, 
uh, we have uh, uh, broken uh, uh, solutions, and also there are so many sectorial uh, efforts. There is no uh, concerted efforts. Also, also short-term uh, dress uh, is uh, so short-term. Every government think uh, it's a long-term issue, so I just do my job. I'll hand it over to the next government. All of a sudden, there is a smog in China. Uh, we are awakened. But actually, this issue is not caused uh, overnight. Can we radically solve the problem of uh, smog in China? It is uh, your idea, ideal uh, solution. So actually, that shows our understanding is uh, not uh, thorough. As a matter of fact, China has come up with a new solution to solve the problem uh, in a, a comprehensive way. We have to build a civilized uh, uh, ecological environment. Uh, we cannot uh, solve uh, one problem uh, beside other problem. So your idea is that we cannot just take a green economy as the only way out. Five years ago, uh, in uh, summer Davos, you came here in different capacity. You told us uh, it is very important uh, to make China's economy greener. Uh, are you satisfied with China's progress uh, over the past uh, five years? No, I'm never satisfied because the progress is too slow. Green economy after the third plenary recession of the party, uh, there's an important decision. Uh, we have to achieve social equality. All emission is the emission of uh, public goods, uh, water, air. Uh, actually, uh, there's uh, no uh, value uh, uh, added uh, to these uh, uh, different commodities. Uh, also, what is uh, green finance? Green finance is not only a, a green uh, economy based loans. Uh, finance is an engine. If uh, we do not have this uh, green uh, finance, uh, we cannot uh, solve the problems. Uh, so, 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 Mr. Gong, uh, are you in favor of that? Uh, can we speed up our development of a green economy? I'm uh, in favor of uh, Mr. Zhang's idea. We need a multi-dimensional solution, social, economic, uh, science, uh, cultural uh, solution to solve uh, the uh, problem of uh, environment and ecology. My Norwegian friends, uh, what is your view from a Norwegian perspective? Uh, how China will change its economy to a greener uh, growth? Are you satisfied with China's uh, economic grow, uh, growth or not satisfied, uh, too slow? It is extremely impressive how China is growing economically, even today. The challenge is to combine this with a green development in addition, not instead of economic growth. And from where China is today, I think there are three important things. First, uh, there needs to be a massive substitution from coal to renewable energy, solar, wind, hydropower, and other renewable sources. And this is expensive to begin with, but very cheap in the long run. Norway already have a 99% renewable electricity system. It was expensive 30 years ago. Today, we have the cheapest electricity in the world. Uh, second is uh, uh, the cities where uh, the car transportation should be replaced by electric cars and hybrid cars, which is electric plus fossil fuel, in which the electricity is used for short distance, which mainly is in the cities. That would both uh, reduce oil import to China and take uh, the smog problem away from the cities. And thirdly, uh, there needs to be price reform on how electricity is sold to the end customers so that um, it is a fair distribution of the cost of the total electricity system in which it is not cheap electricity to all citizens in China, but cheap to those who need it and full price for those who can pay the full price. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Zhang. 
uh, right now we are talking about a green economy. Uh, there are different uh, perspective positions from east and west. Uh, there are different uh, interpretations. Uh, uh, what do you think of uh, the media's uh, coverage? Whether there is uh, a, a, a misunderstanding uh, for the media? Thank you very much. Uh, what actually I'm what I'm going to talk about that. Uh, before East and uh, West, uh, we share same ideas uh, on the root of the issue. Uh, uh, the uh, Greek, Greek, ancient Greek mythology uh, 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 philosophist said actually uh, nature and the human are unity. Later on, we separate uh, nature and uh, mankind. Uh, uh, 300 years after the Industrial Revolution, we believe we can overpower nature. Technology has uh, unlimited uh, 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 power. Are you really think so? Actually, uh, 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 the Earth cannot uh, carry uh, such a huge number of uh, uh, people. Uh, can we? Uh, uh, afford another two degrees uh, of uh, growth of temperature? Uh, our normal temperature is uh, 26 uh, degrees Celsius. If uh, your temperature, body temperature is 20, 38, you have to be ca uh, hospitalized. So actually, our need of human beings and also uh, are the same as the uh, our planet, uh, the Earth. Uh, Earth also has an extreme to support all the people. We need uh, the efforts of. Uh, Every people, uh, person in the world, uh, we need uh, farmers, uh, workers, uh, the young people, women, national, ethnic minorities. We have to join hands uh, to solve this problem. In your words, is that uh, we need uh, to green the whole uh, world. Uh, rather than greening Chinese economy, we need uh, efforts and cooperation of other countries. Uh, I'd like to ask my uh, partner, Li Jun, do you have any questions uh, for the panelists? Uh, actually, uh, I'm so touched by the uh, uh, talks uh, made by the panelists. I'm the uh, only uh, woman on this platform. Actually, environment uh, has to do with uh, everybody. If I t uh, draw open the window every morning, the, the clear, clear sky makes me happy. If the weather is overcast, I'm not happy. Actually, among my friends, everybody was taking photos of uh, green uh, uh, blue skies. Uh, when blue sky become uh, some luxurious uh, goods, uh, do you think uh, we can live in this uh, world uh, happily, comfortably? Uh, whether we have uh, a, uh, a path for China's economy to uh, uh, further grow, that is urbanization. Whether we could innovate uh, in the path of uh, urbanization before we start this session, I'd like to show you another video. In 2007, China's uh, CO2 emission is uh, 6 billion tons, which is the first in the world. Uh, average CO2 emission in China is lower than U.S., but in the future, China will be the main battlefield uh, for CO2 emission reduction. Right now, in China, on average, uh, 15 million people will move to new cities. Uh, the government has to build more houses to house them. There will be more CO2 emission. Uh, in 10 to five, 15 years, uh, these uh, uh, will be a big uh, problem. By before 2020, half of the newly built homes uh, will become a green uh, house. Uh, that is to say, uh, China's CO2 emission should be 30 percent lower than average developed countries. Can you, uh, from an individual level, to make some suggestions in the process of urbanization? What are the responsibilities? What kind of a role we can play for each citizen? As we saw from the video chip, in the process of urbanization, traditional urbanization means very high carbon or emission. The most important innovation is that in the process of doing that, we need to realize low carbon development, individualized. We need to find a lifestyle of low carbon living. This is also very, very essential. We should not only pursue luxury, we also need to frugal and to be con uh, do things uh, following that line. So let me just ask you if individual wants to change his or her lifestyle, 
should we rely mainly on external factor to drive us? I think both interior and external factors are important. The legal constraint, economic leverage, and from inside of our mind, we need to pursue a very, very, uh, you know, innovative uh, living style. So this is equally important. The question now is for Mr. Chen. Your company is a big one on new energy. From your enterprise level in the process of urbanization, what are the breakthrough points your company can find? I have a positive message. We are encountering a problem that is to uh, you know, have a correct mindset in making development and pursuing value. In this industrial revolution, the enterprises have its responsibilities to innovate its development model, to create a model of sustainable development, to develop green economy, and accelerate China's new type of urbanization. On the basis of doing this, urbanization in China can really do well and solve all the inherent contradictions through technical and model innovation. Actually, today, humankind has ushering a new era. That is a, a new era of uh, environmental production. It tells us the key point in future urbanization, the main battlefield for green economy, is to uh, replace the conventional fossil fuel and fossil energy. Also, it will also change greatly our original uh, lifestyle and consumption uh, mindset. This green economy is issuing in a revolution like the circular economy, green economy. It's a brand new model. So that is a brand new uh, development model. Urbanization, innovation of enterprises is to bring the new economy into this new model. We rely uh, mainly on science, management, and capital to create a brand new sustainable development model, and also at the same time to promote the equity and justice of social development. This is the uh, voice from an entrepreneur. Of course, Mr. Chen also mentioned something related to energy. Mr. Lin, you are an expert in energy, in the process of urbanization. What kind of uh, plan uh, you have you know, for reference in energy sector? In the first three decades of economic growth, uh, about 300 uh, million people transfer to live in the cities about the total population of the United States. In the process of doing this, we lost some of the opportunities. Going forward, you know, we still have another two to 300 million people will transfer further to the cities going forward. So what we can do is that, number one, planning. The planning for urbanization in the future, that is, we have to have all the details for low carbon. For example, the bicycle lane, many cities in their city planning do not have a room for bicycle you know, a, a, a lane. It's not that we do not want to ride bicycles. So uh, you know, that's a hard choice for us because uh, you know, we can do some low carbon planning. Also, circular economy is another way out. Most of the people, most of the pollutions are created by the people, not by ur rural area people, but by urban people inside the cities. How should we make things circular? So that is also very, very essential. Talking about energy, in energy, urbanization process, suppose if it can do very well with the planning, government can have very forceful measures. And then we have to focus on infrastructure build up, which is very risky because infrastructure build up, if we do follow a high carbon model, so usually a infrastructure will be there for 20 years, 30 years. So in building infrastructure, we need to focus more on low carbon mandate. For example, buildings can we use wind and solar power or energy, uh, also some other innovative aspects to incorporate them in the planning of our building, 
including the smart and great. So innovation, in terms of the specifics of innovation, how we can incorporate that with the detailed specific urban planning, requiring the planners, city planners, you know, to think through. Finally, I think, like Mr. Gong said, to change people's mindset is very important. Once people use a certain kind of a lifestyle, it's very difficult for them to change. Chinese people, vis-a-vis -vis the U.S. people, are, you know, they pay a lot of attention to saving their resources. So to change the lifestyle of the American people is not an easy job. But the new people, the three million, 300 million people which are going to enter into the city, how we can guide them to live a very uh, meaningful lifestyle. So the government really can do something. Right now, their living style is not kind of a waste-based one. As I know, uh, uh, your company is the biggest uh, renewable comp uh, energy company in Europe. So how do you see you know, where uh, the uh, breakthrough points uh, lie in China's urbanization? The challenges for the cities in China is partly to do with uh, transportation, its congestion on the roads, and it is a pollution as a result of massive amounts of cars and also some power production. Uh, there's also uh, some problems with water supply in some of the cities, whereas the buildings and the way of the city layout is, is uh, quite excellent. Plus, the cities contribute to the global warming. The cities of the world and the cities of China. And um, this, this, the last point is very serious. If all uh, ice on the Earth is melting on the South Pole and Greenland and the glaciers of the world, we will see a 70 meter of sea level rise. That means if only 10% of the ice is melting, it is still 7 meters. That means a city like, like Shanghai will yeah. not be okay. there. Yeah. So, um, in order to solve this in a combination, we have to look for solution with less carbon emission and at the same time stimulating growth. So for the urban cities of, of China and, and for the rest of the world for that sake, to as quickly as possible come over to, to uh, low carbon emission, which means bicycles, including electric bicycles, <laughs> um, electric cars, hybrid cars, uh, underground trains run by electricity. Yeah. That is key, plus the water supply needs to be secured as well. Yeah. So he really worries about the future of China because China's population is so huge, it's difficult for us to achieve things, but still see we need to gradually reduce the, low, uh, the carbon emission. Otherwise, you know, we won't see the cities like Shanghai if things go on like this. So, uh, you know, what, what about you, Mr. Zhang? On a greening issue, urbanization is an issue. I very much agree with this. Uh, we need to look at the urbanization. Uh, Mr. Stiglitz, U.S. economist, said, you know, people are saying, you know, he said, uh, China's urbanization, U.S. scientific innovation are most important for the 21st century. In another 30, 40 year, uh, 30 years, we're going to have 10 billion uh, people in the world. So e ecological issues are very important. This is number one. Secondly, what are the principles of organization? It should be people-centered, social justice. Why can't we allow the farmer to become permanent citizen in the city? But people-centered alone is not enough. Uh, one, so people-centered. People based is very, very important. The second key is the ecology and green are also the basis of the foundations. If you look at the past three, 30 years of the world, China adopted a different urbanization road. 500 million people uh, came out of uh, poverty. We became the second largest economy in the world. But if you look at the east part of China, 
you know, the road is still pollution first, and then rectification later to develop economy first, and then to uh, trade uh, pollution later. But China has 1.3 billion people. The entire world has 7 billion population. So this is why we also need to take ecology and greening as a basis. And certainly, we need to incorporate the ecological build-up into the comprehensive building of the country to realize transfer of our uh, production model and lifestyle. So building, water, all the constructions are U.S. style, consuming huge amount of energy nowadays. Therefore, humankind need to do some rethinking. And also, biodiversity is also very important. Children in the cities do not understand this. You know, people all see the haze. The water is now clear. Uh, people use a lot of uh, uh, plastic bottled water. Also, the uh, food sec security. And, and then uh, people feel all the congestion on their way going to work. We cannot just, you know, treat the symptom. We have to cure the diseases themselves. So urbanization uh, process in the process, you know, the entire world is watching what China will be doing. We cannot go into all the details today, uh, but, you know, uh, we have to push, that is, the green urbanization for all the entrepreneurs, for the government, uh, all the way to the grassroots government. This is a big opportunity instead of just being a CRSR or burden. Secondly, push. Uh, after accession to the WTO, you know, China become a member of the international uh, community. But for urbanization, production, lifestyle, also the pursuance of value, as well as sustainable consumption. So every citizen can cast his vote every day through his purchase, especially the women. They can play a major role every day in their daily uh, buying a grocery or clothing, whether or not they belong to the grain in terms of the supply chain. Everybody is like casting a vote in his or her everyday life. Just now we share with the five uh, a panelist, their thinking. In the future, what should we be doing, you know, in approaching China's greening economy? Let's watch a video tape. In 2012, primary energy consumption of standard coal was 3.62 billion tons. That was 20% of the global consumption. Energy efficiency was 2.5 times higher than the average global standard, 3.3 times higher than the US, seven times higher than Japan. Average consumption of one ton of standard coal generated 14,000 RMB GDP in China. The world's average was 25,000 RMB. It was 31,000 in the US, 50,000 in Japan. Prediction assuming global energy consumption remains unchanged. If China attains the world average, its GDP will turn 87 trillion RMB yuan. If it can attain US energy consumption efficiency, GDP will turn 109 trillion. Atta attaining Japan's standard, its GDP will become 175 billion. Latest figures from the NDRC are China's comparing energy consumption by individual unit or organization from 2007 to 2014. Q2 shows that China has been reducing energy consumed year by year. China achieved the lowest energy consumption by Q2 of 2014. So in the first half of this year, we have achieved a very great uh, achievements. Here. As you've seen the, from the video shape, China has been referencing itself, comparing itself to other uh, countries in the world, like the US and Japan. But on the road of China developing its green economy, so i like to ask Mr. Zhang, many people on making the comparison in the process of greening in China, China need to be uh, having its own characteristics. What are the differences? China cannot take the role taken by the US and Europe in modernization based on the per capita consumption, its economy and the environment. It cannot endure this huge burden. Otherwise, we need 1.2 uh, kind of Earth we can have 
Uh, but uh, on September 23rd this year, the global leaders will have a summit in New York City. It's not you want to do this or not that. It's a necessity. It's a must. We have 26 civilizations in the world since the beginning of the war, but 25 civilizations vanished, not because of the failure or, or corruption of war. It's because of the ecosystem. So this is why we're seeing if we have a good economy, uh, ecology, and the entire world will survive. So what should China be doing? China already put forward a, a, a road. It's called the eco-civilization. That is China's approach. Uh, Eco-civilization uh, build up, if you compare that with the UN, circular economy, sustainable development, I think there are four things. Number one, green economy. Secondly, sustainable development equality. The social justice equality, including the governance of the, uh, of the country, its capacity, its system, the public uh, 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 health, also environmental protection put forward by the UN is on the technical level. But equal efficiency is also very important. The earth itself can, ha can heal itself to some extent. Number four, more important, that's something UN did not see. That's the ethics. In 2008, the financial crisis is not only become of the higher leverage and the poor regulation, it's greediness, like Mr. Gandhi said. Earth's nature provides enough resources for people to consume, but it cannot afford the greediness of humankind. So ethics is also very important. So exchange, we need the West and the East world joining hand to cooperate with each other. So the two civilizations from the uh, east and from the west to learn from each other, to exchange with each other. But now the Western civilization is dominating. So I think we need to be equal, we need to join hands uh, in, in doing this. You talk about the word of equal civilization. Yesterday in the presentation, Premier Li Keqiang also mentioned the equal civilization. The question is for Mr. Lin from the energy perspective in the future. The green economy in China, in energy, where are the way out? Let me just clarify two things. The first one, looking at the video, the VDP uh, in China in US, uh, per capita you know, consumption, energy consumption, I do not believe that's an appropriate uh, comparison because the two countries are two different economic development uh, stages. Actually, U.S. had a similar or even worse issues like China. When the U.S. was at the current uh, the stage of China, of current China development stage, so this is something I like to clarify. So you cannot just simply compare, you know, the U.S. and China based on, you know, uh, the the per capita uh, GDP and energy consumption. Secondly, it's even more important for humankind to go forward. What will be the green development look like? Looking like the green is clean development. The Chinese government is doing making great efforts. Right now on the primary energy uh, growth we draw by uh, 1% uh, every year. That has to do with uh, the control and uh, measures. And also, uh, the renewable energy and clean energy is developing at a, a speed uh, far higher than we expected. Altogether, the Chinese government uh, does uh, made a great efforts. But right now, the inertia of the economy growth uh, is uh, uh, has to follow a role. Are we falling? Uh, the path of the U.S., uh, you always, it's easy to say, do not take the old path of the Western countries, but actually uh, China is uh, riding on the same path with the Western countries. Uh, uh, there was uh, smog in Western countries. Uh, there was measures taken by Western countries to uh, solve this problem. Uh, China is doing the same thing, but compared uh, with the smog with the Western countries many years ago, it is uh, less serious. Uh, I'm sure we 
can do better than Western countries. Uh, the two panelists uh, mentioned uh, China uh, East and the West uh, have a different uh, perspective to interpret uh, this issue. I'd like to invite uh, Yilong. Uh, in your research development, uh, do you think you have uh, your own way of development? Uh, yes, of course. By technical and uh, commercial innovation, we can solve this problem. Right now in China, the energy mix ha is very problematic. That is to say, the share of fossil energy is too high, more than 80 percent. Uh, today, to develop new energy, more people are think of uh, uh, wind power, solar power, because these are easy powers. But they neglected one thing. Wind power in the new uh, energy mix, it can only uh, play a supplementary uh, role. That is to say, it can only generate power rather than uh, providing other kind of energies, uh, replacing uh, the functions of uh, the uh, natural gas, uh, crude oil, and uh, the coals. So only uh, biotech uh, energy uh, can help uh, to replace uh, the uh, current energy resources uh, producing uh, uh, fuel, uh, electricity, things like that. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, the uh, past, over the past so many thousand years, uh, uh, China was a, uh, a civilized agricultural country. There's no shortage of energy, but industrial revolution and uh, uh, 200 years after that, uh, it has put the world in disorder because uh, the ways of us using energy is uh, wrong. People are doing that based on their selfishness and their greed. Every year, the how many uh, how much uh, solar has been uh, changed into uh, uh, biotechnology? A very limited amount. But last year, uh, altogether, we have uh, uh, 13 uh, billion uh, uh, tons of standard coal uh, generated uh, by uh, uh, natural gas uh, and uh, the uh, crude oil and coal. So well, we need to make more efforts. Uh, right now, the China has made a lot of efforts. So we have uh, produced uh, far cleaner uh, fuels uh, with the support of a technology. There is a lot of success. Also, in terms of uh, business model, we can solve the problem. We have to mobilize the farmers uh, to farm the uh, energy. Right now, we are seeing glimpse of hope. Oh, spring is coming, although we are still in the winter. Uh, actually, uh, environmental protection is an uh, issue not concerned by us, but also by foreign countries. Uh, we want to cooperate with the international community. My question to Christian, in terms of green economy, how China should uh, uh, cooperate with uh, Western uh, companies, and in what way? I think w when it comes to using bioenergy, there could be some learning from uh, processes in Europe and in the US. And I do fully agree that it's also important for China to follow that path. On top of that, to, I already mentioned uh, using more electricity in the urban sector. That should be combined with more renewable energy in total on the rooftops as solar and in general. And this is not only for the environment. This uh, renewable energy is uh, capital cost intensive, but once the capital has been paid down, it will be more or less free energy into eternity from the wind and the sun and the water. So it will be the cheapest supply of energy for China long term. And also it will be self-sufficiency for the country, which is important in a wider aspect of providing China's own energy. So the combination of renewable energy, including biomass and um, electrification of cities is what is needed. Uh, Last, uh, I'd like to ask um, Pref uh, President Gong Ke. Uh, China is going to build a green economy. That is a very task. Uh, you cannot just uh, say we should uh, speed up our process. Uh, from the foreign perspective, uh, uh, the foreigners are uh, confident in China, and also they want China to follow the international rules and uh, standard. Uh, whether uh, we realize uh, this uh, uh, green economy, we can have some new ideas. 
uh, fundamentally, I want to say is that uh, uh, ecological issue has to do with uh, technology, energies, uh, systems. But in the end, uh, that has to do with people. Ecological culture is a human culture, so we cannot uh, neglect uh, education. We need a green education to train new generations of uh, people, not only in China, but also in the world. Now, this is uh, the fundamental issue. Uh, that has to do with uh, your post as the president of the university. But uh, for us uh, working in the medium, we want to uh, invite more ideas. Uh, time is uh, limited today. I'd like to uh, invite uh, uh, people from the audience uh, to share your views. Uh, this uh, person, uh, uh, this lady in uh, white, uh, tell us your name and uh, where you come from. Uh, from Economic Daily. My question is to Mr. Zhang. You mentioned uh, uh, green finance. Uh, my question is that uh, what is the biggest uh, obstacles of uh, gray growing green uh, finance? Uh, uh, the green uh, finance, uh, green credit, has to do with uh, the uh, social responsibility. There's uh, no limit, uh, and uh, no bank is willing to do that. Uh, uh, and also, what is uh, a return on investment uh, for providing uh, green finance? Uh, there are many problems involved. Uh, how China develop uh, these uh, uh, green economy, uh, green uh, finance? Uh, uh, what are the problems? Uh, what should be done? Thank you very much, Mr. Zhang. This is a very good question. I'm not a financial specialist, but I know uh, green uh, finance as a heart and engine can kill three uh, birds with one stone to solve the fundamental uh, issue. Over the past 260 years of development, uh, uh, environment and development is always uh, regarded as a contradiction. Economy and ecology are harmonious. Actually, uh, that is already expressed by the ancient Greek philosopher. That's why our top leadership of the country combined uh, the reform of economic structure and ecological structure. Uh, we have to readjust the functions of economic development vis-à-vis uh, -vis the efficiency of ecological development, uh, as well as uh, its uh, uh, contribution to social and uh, the uh, mankind. Uh, in terms of obstacles uh, uh, for China, government should uh, uh, make a good design on the institutional level. But in terms of uh, operations, we need to rely on market, on the enthusiasm, initiative of the people. That's why we are uh, trying to uh, build a uh, green uh, ecological bank. Bu Qiang, I wrote a textbook on uh, energy finance. You can search from the internet and find my book. Uh, green finance is this. Uh, if you say green, you have to define what is uh, green. In terms of the, uh, of, uh, it is very difficult for the banks uh, to uh, understand what is a green uh, finance, and also the term is very long when it talk about uh, return on investment. Uh, when you give out the money, you haven't seen anything. Uh, you cannot just say you have made a contribution by giving loans uh, to somebody. So the bank, the banks cannot uh, understand that easily. That's why we need uh, subsidies uh, at the first. Uh, it is also difficult for the go for the banks uh, to give the uh, loans. Uh, the government's role is that to provide guarantee subsidies. So we have to combine government with uh, financial institutions uh, to come up with uh, a solution. Sometimes uh, uh, issues cannot be solved only alone by banks. Uh, Elon, you. Uh, must have uh, uh, this problem. How do you persuade the banks to help you? The core issue is that uh, you need to have a new mindset of development. As long as you stick to the policy uh, of uh, uh, sustainable development uh, to push forward the new economy uh, development uh, to build a, a fair uh, legal system to support that, as uh, our professor said. Uh, carbon tax is an issue. 
why today's economic development is not fair, traditional uh, fossil energy group do not shoulder the responsibility of for the society. They damaged the uh, environment, and we have to foot the bill. That's not fair. So, so if uh, we levy the tax from those uh, fossil fuel companies, uh, that is a good way. We need to understand that there is a huge resources of a low carbon. Uh, so we should not uh, follow the traditional way of uh, issuing loans. We have to make use of the low carbon resources. We are responsible for protecting this uh, earth and uh, to promote uh, equality on this world. Uh, my uh, Norwegian friend, what is your view on this? Uh, in your country, when you have these similar problems, how do you solve this problem? I think when it comes to financing, which is key, um, the best system is to have a guaranteed price system, a fixed price for 10, 15 years or so, because then the risk to, it, to the capital is low, and then the interest will be low, and thereby the, the, the total cost will be low. There are a number of countries uh, doing that. England has a good system, Brazil has a good system. So there are many places to look, but the, the key is to get the risk to investors down and thereby the, the cost down. And China has a lot of capital, so you should be number one country in mastering this. Thank you very much. Uh, this uh, journalist's uh, question is that uh, green economy, green uh, business, uh, whether they are sustainable, whether they can grow, whether they can self-sustain themselves. Uh, our Norwegian uh, company is uh, 119 years old, which is very successful. This is the biggest uh, European re renewable energy company. This is the uh, biggest company in China. Between you, uh, do you view your Norwegian friend a competitor or friend? Uh, certainly, friends, cooperators. Uh, we are not promoting the building a ecologically civilized society. We need a cooperation. We want to uh, uh, bring to an end of the so-called industrial civilization and build a new civilization without uh, the unity of uh, the uh, whole. Uh, World, we cannot do that. Uh, shake hands. This is a historical handshake. Uh, of course, uh, you, from their uh, 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 from their eyes, you can see they are real friends rather than competitors. Uh, uh, this is a good handshake. I'm sure that uh, with the help of uh, uh, with the efforts of China and efforts of uh, other countries, China's uh, green economy will be a. Uh, brought uh, bright future. Uh, today, my impression is that uh, Mr. Zhang told us uh, uh, China's economic uh, growth is still low. We need to work even harder. He said, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we need to have a heart of civilization, a heart of uh, uh, ecological uh, uh, green future. Mm -hmm. Economy, ecology. Uh, two words in English has uh, E's at the beginning. Although uh, they seem to be contradictory to each other, uh, they actually can join hands. Uh, by joining hands uh, uh, with us, uh, we can have an enjoyable uh, future, an uh, enjoyable uh, Earth. This is my fifth, fifth time to uh, attend Davos, China. Tianjin is very beautiful. Uh, I like this uh, green uh, uh, photo on this uh, pamphlet. I like to bring China back to this uh, green land. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, the five panelists. Thank you. 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 好好，占用大家一分钟。刚才因为音响的原因，刚才我的声音没有收进去，因为我们这要是要电视直播，所以没有声音，很画面会不太好看。嗯。呃，可是第二段的。哦，那句啊。哦，好了，好了。好。
好，刚才呢，我们看过这个小片，相信每个人心里都有自己的理解和感触。所以我的接下来的第一个问题要问给龚校长，您认为从我们个人的角度来讲，我们在城镇化这个进程当中，我们自己的突破点在哪里？我想作为从作为市民来讲，我应该怎么着？好，谢谢您的回答，太精彩了！<笑>谢谢大家，谢谢大家。<笑>谢谢大家，谢谢，谢谢，谢谢，再次谢谢。谢谢，谢谢，谢谢，谢谢。